So we're just imagining this is like a Hello and welcome back to the Fellowship of Beer. I'm Nick Smith, I'm the Chief Beer Educator here at the Fellowship of Beer and we're joined today by Phil. Hello. Phil is the brewery manager here at Steam Machine Brewing Company, which is the headquarters of the Fellowship of Beer. Ta -da! And today we have a new beer to focus on. This is Vox's 1899 Stout from Amazing. Sunderland. That's exciting. Do you want to tell us a bit about it while I wrestle with the wax? Vox, I have a bit of history about Vox. Yes. That was founded at the beginning of the 1800s. Um, it became a major employer within the city of Sunderland. Brewed legendary beers such as Samson, Double Maxim, Lorimer's. Viking Lager, which we don't talk Scorpion about. Scorpion Lager? Was it Norse that Lager? That Norse or the Norseman, Norseman Lager, Norseman Lager and Scorpion which Lager. Which was apparently awful. Was it? Apparently. I'm too young. <laughs> I've got an ashtray of it. A woman from a WI meeting gave me a, a plastic ashtray, a Norseman Lager. So Vox was a major part of life in Sunderland for nearly 200 years. Before the end of the 1990s, the decision was made to close the brewery. That was to do with, with people who owned the company not not even being related to Sunderland, people who yeah, were like the, the brewery itself was large conglomerates. The stuff, brewery itself it? was still profitable, apparently, but they'd got involved with a lot of hotels and things. And, and Vox ended? It uh, ended in 1999, and the company was bought by Whitbread in the year 2000, right. and that was the closure of the brewery. So what happened to these people, like some of these key people, like brewers and stuff who are out of work? Well, some of the directors and brewers formed Maxim Brewery uh -huh. um, in the year 2000, and with that took a lot of the old recipes from Vaux, so the likes of Double Maxim are still brewed today. Yeah, and brewed to the same recipe by the same people. I believe so. And that's from just outside Sunderland, isn't it, in Horton Spring? It is indeed. Then, so what's the story of the actual name of Vaux? Vaux! The name itself, the brand, was reborn in 2019 by two old school friends from the city. Oh. And to bring it in line with the new Sunderland that had appeared since the closure of the old brewery, it became a modern craft style brewery, basically. And they opened their own brewery in the year 2020. And it's a thriving tap room today. The brewing beers such as Black Wave, Oatmeal Stout. They've got the hazy shade of IPA range. And they've done a lot of excellent collaborations. They did one with our friends at S43 A uh, Barley Wine, which was excellent as well. I think they've done one with John from Hobson Dots as well. They have they? indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So their brewer is Les Oxley, it or is. their head brewer. Les is a lovely guy who's very he's very well known on the northeast beer scene. And he used to be the brewer at Anarchy. He's also done stuff at Alpha Delta as well, yeah. I believe too. Yeah. All round good guy. Excellent. Met him once, he gave Top me a man. hug. Thanks, Les. Right, let's get stuck into what it. What is it? What have we got? Well, so this is this is a heritage stout that's been inspired by their 1899 stout. So it's a respectable 7%. Now, it's been made with heritage malts that we use a lot personally in brewing. Yeah. One of them they've used is um, Plumage Archer, which is a 1905 malt. So this is kind of like, you're going to get completely different flavours of that from your modern malts like your Marisotta and your... Okay you know, your golden promise and things. Amazing. They've also used some brown malt in this, I believe, which was brown malt and black malt were the only other two malts you would have found in heritage stouts, along with um, your pale malt, possibly a bit of amber malt as well. So I'm really looking forward to this. So is this, this is inspired by an old recipe? Yes, yeah. that's right. Um, it says, this beer showcases heritage malts and classic English hops to offer an insight into a different era. Mm, so also, nice. We need to give it a silent applause for the fact it's in a big bottle. It's in a big bottle. <laughs> yeah. I'm selfishly pouring my glass first. I wouldn't expect anything else from really. <laughs> I mean, you can smell it from here. It smells great, doesn't it? Ooh. Big fluffy tan head on that. It smells like everything you would expect from a stout that hasn't been brewed with, you know, high levels of... I like adjuncts and things like that. It's just all of your standard beer ingredients. Straight up. Straight up. Get like that kind of like dry coffee, dark chocolate. chocolate. Yeah. Like a touch of like vinous, a touch of almost like tobacco as well. Guys, if you are trying to appreciate beer and drink beer, we these glasses came from a charity shop. Um, we like glasses that funnel the rums into our nose, but the best glass to enjoy your beer in 
is the one that you're comfortable holding and the one that's closest to hand Correct. and the one that's clean. The one that's full. The one that's full. Anyway, cheers. cheers. Let's get stuck in. That's lovely. That's amazing. Wow. It's got loads of that dry, roasty. There's a lot going on. It's got like a lovely bitterness. It's the kind of stout that we see far too few of Correct. in this craft. Age. It's really viscous. Really, yeah, it is viscous. And um, but it finishes like really dry as yeah. well. Loads. It's of, not cloying, is it at all? No, loads of hop character, like hop for a stout, like hop bitterness. You mm. say it's quite similar to like uh, you know the the export stouts in terms of that hoppiness, or yeah, I think so. Yeah, you suggested a pairing for this northeast beer. You suggested a northeast pairing. I did. We've gone with Lindisfarne oysters. So Lindisfarne, um, little island off the coast of Northumberland, famous for being invaded by Vikings for monks and um, nice beaches, seals. Lovely, lovely days out. <laughs> lovely days out. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Why, why, why would oysters go well with a stout? So it's, it's, it's like the classic beer pairing. Like before people started beer pairing anything else, oysters was all, stout was always the thing that was built with oysters. And it's because oysters are really briny. You know, you've got all that sea water almost in there. You know, very the salty. Yeah. Dry stouts work really well. Well, all stouts work really well with, with saltiness. Yeah. But these aren't a massively intense flavour. They still have a delicateness to it. So using something that's roasty and dry, okay. as opposed to like a big imperial, is is a lot better for Amazing. that. There's also like that pillowy kind of creamy texture of the stout, which, which is just definitely has, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 do you know what? Like for for a blind beer that we've poured, I couldn't have picked a better beer to have with the oyster. And the oyster, you get that sharp acidity as well, especially from the squirt lemon brininess. So they're just gonna contrast with each other. Now um, we've. Not really had oysters really before. No, we've not had oyster sober before. No, um, I've had them cooked, like Chinese yes. oysters and stuff like that. But Our only oyster experience previously was at a beer festival. It was Indie Man Beer Con in Manchester. Was, and we thought this would be a good idea to line our stomachs with. Yeah. And it did work. It was lovely. And the girl was really persuasive at persuading us to yeah. buy oysters. We spent a fortune. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so we do remember them though. And we actually, remember. so she she gave us one with lemon juice and she gave us one with Tabasco hot sauce. Yes. Which is why we've actually brought our own in-house hot sauce made by Rick, the steam machine chef. It's made with beer. Made with beer. Beer fermented hot sauce. This is everything here. Right. What um, are you going to do with yours first? Uh, I think I'll go lemon juice. Okay. A little squeeze of lemon. You're going classic. Classic. I mean, which two do you want? Because um, I know you're a bit. I'm going to go with this one. Yeah, it looks a good one. I'm going to go with this one. Okay, I'm going to have a bit of stout. Stout first? I don't know. I'm just guessing so. Chin chin. Do we ching ching it? Well, why not? Are you going straight down? Going straight down. No chew? No chew. Okay. Mm. Mm. Actually, it was... That's very nice. It was a lot nicer than I expected. Mm. Mm. I mean, it does taste of the sea. It tastes of the sea. Mm. How nice is that? It tastes of stout. <laughs> yeah, it does work. You get a lot more sweetness you from that need. and a lot of thickness to that after yeah. that. Right, I'm going to try another one with hot sauce. See how I feel about this. I mean, it was good at Indie Man Beer Con. Cheers. That's really nice. Try with the sound. Oh, God. If anything, I would say, even though I enjoyed the oyster the most with the hot sauce, I think the heat of the sauce has taken something away for the stout. Really? Whereas I think the lemon acidity was better. Okay, which one do you think was best? I think the oyster itself tasted better with hot sauce than lemon juice. However, as a beer and food pairing, I think the lemon juice, the acidity of the lemon juice next to the brine, next to the roastiness of the stout was better. Amazing. But, you know. I agree. If you've got a plate of oysters. Yeah. Might as well go for both. 
All right. Um, that comes to a close. And that's amazing. So, delightful stout. Thanks, folks. Paired with some Northeast seafood in a classic, classic pairing. Um, thanks for watching. Catch you again soon for another beer focus. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> It's all right, it's fine. It's not all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, I've had them before, I just, they're too big, they're horrible. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, do it again.